Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, graph the cosecant graph as well as graph the secant graph, which I just I didn't change that. All right. So um, in this example here, uh, basically when we're graphing the cosecant graph, you can see, though, that now we have some addition and subtraction inside of a function. So that's going to be, um, that is going to be affecting our phase shift, right? So now we're going to be shifting our graph left and right. Well, really, all it's doing is just changing where we're going to kind of start our initial period, right? Or the whole graph is really just kind of being shifted over. Uh, but we still need to identify what the period is and what the x scale is. Now, I'm going to do this problem a little bit quicker than what we've done before, because basically I can see that b is 1. So therefore, I know my period is just going to be 1 here. Um, and so therefore, it's going to be the same here. I have the initial period of cosecant and the initial period of secant. So the period, and I'll just do this one out, might as well. Two, the period is, remember, 2 pi divided by b, where b is the value that's in front of your x here, which is in 1. <sighs> y equals a cosecant of bx minus c. OK, so that's going to be 2 pi. Our x scale, remember, is going to be our period divided by 4. So we have 2 pi divided by 4 which is pi halves. Now remember, when we're graphing um, the cosecant as well as the secant graph, uh, we're not going to have a period. But basically, the best thing to do is to I like to graph the sine and the cosine, which are the reciprocal functions. So if I was going to graph them, I'd need to make sure I know what the period is. So y equals 2 sine of x plus pi halves. If I was going to graph that function, I would know that I'd have to figure out the amplitude, which the amplitude is the absolute value of a which in this case would be the absolute value of 2, which is just 2. And I'm going to use that information because remember, in the reciprocal function, that's going to tell us how high and low the graph's going to be, basically the max and the min of that graph. So um, let's go ahead and start graphing. Oh, idiot, I'm not done yet. Um, now, typically, the initial period here, you can see, starts at 0, right, where the y-axis is. But where these get confusing here is now we're not always going to be, now we have a phase shift. So what we need to do is we need to figure out where we're going to start. So to figure out the start, what you basically do is take whatever set inside of your function and set it equal to 0. So what I have here is x plus pi halves equals 0. Well, I'll just simply subtract pi halves, and I get x equals negative pi halves. So now, I'm going to do two periods to the right. So now, let's say, he, hey, here's 0, or the y-axis, right? Well, now, I'm just going to have to do at least one, um, one point here over to the right. So I'll say, all right, that's negative pi halves. That's 0. This will be pi halves. Um, this would be 2 pi halves. I'm sorry, 1 pi half, 2 pi halves, which is just pi. This would be 3 pi halves. And this would be 4 pi halves, which would just be 2 pi. Now, typically, this would have been how far we would have gone. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even type in these. I can't believe I didn't do the periods here. OK. Um, so typically, from 0 to 2 pi would have been enough for a period, right? But now, we're going to be starting at negative pi halves. So instead of starting here at 0, it's going to start at negative pi halves. So I kind of went a little bit farther, because I need to do 1, 2, 3, 4. I need to keep on doing. So this would be 4 pi. So this would be 5 pi. This is going to be 3 pi, because basically 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to do two periods, 1, 2, 3. OK, 6 pi, so that's 7 pi. OK, so basically now what I'd like to do is determine the amplitude here, which is 2. So that means my graph is basically going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. OK, so basically what we do here is I'm going to graph uh, my cosecant graph here in a day, or sorry, the sine graph in a dotted line. So it starts at 0, goes up to a maximum, min intercept, minimum. So. And then intercept. OK, so that's one full period. And then I just continue the pattern. OK, 
So now, again, that's just the sine graph, right? That's really basically this. Well, we're not trying to graph sine. We're trying to graph the cosecant. So remember, how they're related is wherever the sine graph intercepts the x-axis, I'm going to draw an asymptote. And the maximum and the minimum are also points, and I'm going to draw curves that are approaching the asymptotes in the opposite direction of the sine in the graph, or the sine um, sine graph. So I'm just going to draw my asymptotes here. Okay, then we're going to approach our asymptotes. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how um, that is how you graph the cosecant graph. Now let's go ahead and get over to the secant graph. Now the secant graph, you can see there's really basically no changes, right? Um, or basically there's really no uh, no transformations to in the graph except for x minus pi. So to kind of make this video and even the process go by faster, I know that the period is going to be 2 pi. I know the x scale is going to be pi halves. And I know the amplitude is going to be 1. So I'm not even going to write that stuff down. Um, the only thing I need to figure out is what is going to be my new start. So again, I just take what's inside my function, say x minus pi equals 0. So I add pi, add pi, x equals pi. OK, so now instead of starting at negative pi halves or starting at 0 like my graphs, I'm now going to start at pi. So um, actually, let's make pi. OK, um, let's do two periods to the right and to the left. So what I'll do is if I start at pi here and I say pi is in the middle, well, again, my x scale is going to be pi halves, right? Um, so that'd be 2 pi over. 2 pi over 2, so this would be 3 pi halves. 4 pi halves, which would be 2 pi. 5 pi halves. And then 6 pi halves, which would be 3 pi. So we're going to do one period to the right, and then we're going to do one period to the left. So this would be pi halves. This would be 0, negative pi halves, and then negative pi. So basically, here's going to be our start. right? This is where we're going to start our initial period. However, really, the y-axis, though, is right here. And that's just important just so you guys can kind of know where the y-axis is, but where exactly we're going to be starting. Because the initial period starts at 0, but now, since it's phase shift, we're now going to be starting at pi. Um, all right, and now the amplitude we know is already going to be 1 and down to negative 1. Okay, So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to just graph the cosine graph, um, or again, graph the cosine graph, and then use the cosine graph to you to graph the secant. Well, remember cosine would start at its maximum. So at our start, which is pi, we're going to start at the maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. So we're doing one period to the right, and then we're going to do a period to the left. And there you go, done. So now we're, but again, that's for cosine. We're not graphing cosine, we're graphing secant. So again, all of these asymptotes. Okay, and then every single maximum and minimum is going to be a part on the secant graph. And we're just going to draw nice little curves that are approaching the asymptotes. Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph the cosecant as well as the secant graph when you have a change in period. Or no, there's no change in period. Only, excuse me, a change in your phase shift. Thanks.